Hello, everybody. Welcome to Designers Learning jQuery, episode 12. Today, we're going to talk about using jQuery in no conflict mode. But before I get into how to use no conflict mode, let's talk a little bit about exactly what no conflict mode is and then why we would want to use it. As you've probably noticed in our podcasts or in the code samples in the book, jQuery uses the dollar sign to select and work with elements. That's all fine, but jQuery wasn't the only JavaScript library that had that idea. So if you're also working with other JavaScript libraries like Prototype or MooTools or Zepto, you'll find that those libraries also use the dollar sign in their code. And there's nothing wrong with that until you want to use two of those libraries at the same time. If I try to use MooTools and jQuery at the same time on the same web page, and I try to use the dollar sign in my code, I'll run into troubles because the two libraries are conflicting with one another and my code won't work as expected or it won't work at all. That's where no conflict mode comes into play. Basically, it lets us tell jQuery that we don't want to use the dollar sign anymore and we can then write our code in a slightly different way so that there isn't any conflict over the dollar sign and everything works as expected. Where you're most likely to run into this nowadays is if you're working with WordPress because someone who owns a WordPress site can install any theme they like and then any number of plugins. So it's hard to predict which JavaScript libraries their theme or their plugins might be using. You might, for example, write a theme that uses the jQuery library, but then the site owner might install a plugin that uses prototype or MooTools. To prevent any conflicts from happening, if you load up jQuery in your WordPress theme or plugin correctly, it gets loaded onto the page in no conflict mode. Now that we understand what no conflict mode is and why we'd use it, let's jump into a little bit of code to take a look at how we go about using it. I have a very simple HTML page, just a header and an unordered list of animals. And in our code, you can see this is a very simple HTML page. And I've added a class of highlight and given it a background color of pale green. And we'll just use this class to see what's happening on the HTML page. So this is just to let us see something that's happening on the page. In our scripts.js file is where we're going to write our code. First, to put jQuery into no conflict mode, we can do this. That's all we have to do. Now jQuery is no longer using the dollar sign. So if we want to take advantage of jQuery's methods, we have to use the full name of the jQuery function instead of the dollar sign, which is kind of like its short nickname. So for example, if I wanted to give that class of highlight to all of the list items in the list, before I would have written code that looked like this, but that actually won't work right now. So what I have to do instead is use the full name of the jQuery library. If we head back over to the browser and refresh it, we can see that all of our list items get highlighted in green. Okay, that's not so hard, but wow, that's a lot more typing. I'm really lazy about typing when I'm writing code, so let's take a look at some ways that we could type a little bit less and not have to type out the full name of jQuery every time. The first thing that we could do is to set up a function in a special way so that the dollar sign will work inside the function without conflicting with any code that's outside the function. I know that that just sounded really confusing, but it's not so bad once you actually see the code in action. So what that looks like is this. We write a function and we pass a parameter of a dollar sign to it. So just like that. And then we wrap the entire function in parentheses. And then at the end, we put jQuery in parentheses. 
So that's not so hard. And we can take this code and put it inside this function, which means it should be indented a bit. And now if I'm inside this function, I can use the dollar sign and my code will work just fine. Pop over here and refresh the page and you can see all of our items are still green. If I try to put this code outside of that function and I refresh the page, you can see that it doesn't work. So as long as this code is inside this function, the dollar sign is equal to jQuery. But if we're outside that function, so we're anywhere outside of that function, then the dollar sign and jQuery are two different things. We also have one other option for typing a little bit less when we are using jQuery in no conflict mode, and that's to give jQuery a different nickname. Now, when I do this, I like to use dollar sign J as the new name for jQuery. You can use the dollar sign in your name as long as you don't use the dollar sign by itself. You can use any legal variable name for jQuery. You could just call it J. You could call it JQ. You could call it J capital Q. Whoops. You could call it J capital Q. You could even call it Henry. You can call jQuery just about anything you'd like. Then what happens is when you call the function, you call it whatever you nicknamed it. Henry's a little bit silly because it's not much less typing than jQuery. So let's go ahead and go back to using dollar sign J. So dollar sign J. And if we go over here and refresh the page. So basically anywhere before that we would have used the dollar sign by itself, we can now use dollar sign J because we have told jQuery that this is its new nickname. And once again, it's okay to use the dollar sign in that nickname as long as the nickname isn't just the dollar sign. So this is not going to resolve the conflict. That's not gonna fix the problem for you. You'd have to add another character to that nickname, um, at least one more character besides just the dollar sign. That's everything you need to know about jQuery and no conflict mode. The sample code that I created in this episode, along with some show notes and all of the other episodes of Designers Learning jQuery, are available at designerslearningjQuery.com, where you can also subscribe to get the new video that's released every Tuesday. See you next week. If you enjoyed this video and would like to learn more about jQuery, pick up a copy of my book, jQuery for Designers, available now. Thank you.